Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time we're going to look at a sensor unit. I really don't know what is inside this thing. It's quite big and very, very heavy. And it is called XY Nikungsaufnehmer PE. W D X Y E eleven. Uh, it's um, it's a tilt sensor, a tilt sensor a from a crane. And the idea is that it can tell if the crane goes yeah perfectly straight up and if everything is aligned uh, perfectly. And I believe this one is analog. We got some uh, like four wires here. Look, we've got some outputs, X and Y outputs, and it's a current output. So we've got 24 volts DC. I can't really make up the rest of the stuff here. And uh, it's uh, from the company uh, that still exists. This FSG still exists. It's a German company. I, of course, uh, found their webpage and found a lot of their products and they still do stuff like this and of course it looks a lot smaller today this one here says it's made in Germany and uh, other than that yes you can see that the crane is of course uh, crashed somehow so this sensor is broken and this is of course why I got it but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to try and open this thing and see what is inside and this is where we had the connector and this is completely broken so there's no way i can power it up the way it is i need to open it first imagine what kind of damage yeah well well let's try and open it and see what is inside right well, that's a little bit of a surprise it, it is actually open and it's full of oil and uh, funky stuff what is going on here and i see there's a little o-ring on this side and i was able to get all the screws out on this side and i couldn't get all the screws out on the other side but only one uh, remains so i expect in a second i'm gonna get my entire table full of oil or uh, other liquid funky stuff here What is going on here? Oy, 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 oy. What have I gotten myself into? Now I'll try and take off the side. Oh, look at that. And yes, that one is also full of funky oil here. Oy, oy, oy. That is a lot of fun. So now I'm out in my little... Uh, whoa. My little funny workshop <laughs> and here here i want to play with a little bit of different things to see if i can uh, figure out how to clean this up the best way because i don't want this sticky oil all over the place so let's see what we're gonna start with it is absolutely amazing how it works without uh, all the oil to dampen the vibrations here so that's of course a super super low friction potentiometer of the very very special and it just swings and swings and swings forever i kind of lost the little rubber end stoppers here and of course they prevent this click click sound so that is um, all there is in this box i think but it says something about some milliamps. Maybe this is maximum how many milliamps. Um, I think I want to try and drill out the last little screw here that was uh, broken. And then I'll see there's probably some resistors or some calibration potentiometers. I don't know. It was, by the way, uh, petroleum that uh, did the trick. And there's a nice little hole here, so what I could do is, I could uh, blow through petroleum and then I could wash out uh, all the oils and stuff in here. 
So I think this is what emptied the potentiometers completely. And this is why they run so nice and fine right now. So I was able to drill that screw real easy. So let's look inside. Ooh. What is going on in here? Why are we having so much electronics in there? All those transistors and doctors. I mean, I am super curious to figure out what is going on here? This is far beyond what I imagined. I understand that we have a current output, you know, 4 to 20 milliamps more or less. Maybe that is the what they are trying to say on the label. Because I don't have the data sheet or anything like that. So, of course, we've got some reference, voltage references and all that kind of stuff. But why are we having all those inductors and such? Okay, we got how many trimmers and swell and all those transistors. It's just far, far over what I expected. I really want to see if I can figure out how to power this up. But all I got, that will be those wires here and... and how can I figure out what is what here? There must be a way, right? I normally don't quit that easy. So there must be a way. I've been having a lot of uh, big, big breakthroughs when it comes to this fantastic product. I called a, a few of my friends. I got a super Google Meister from Germany. And he called everybody around and he found full access to support. And we got the... <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. So the story is that they were able to look up this exact unit from the database. And this one is from November 1994. So now we know the exact age of this product. We also got a documentation about how this one works. They found some sales material and this reveals this is of course an inductive sensor. So it consists of two inductors and one moving metal parts that sort of shorts the inductor um, by eddy current effect. So there's no... Um, there's no sliders and there's no friction whatsoever. And this is why it moves absolutely freely, no matter what. And this is, of course, how it can detect, you know, even the slightest movement in oil. The oil is only for dampening, so it's not going like this, but it's going to stay exactly where it's supposed to be. So that's, uh, that is how it works. And we even found the data sheet of the sensor alone, because this one is another product you can buy and include in whatever you want. And uh, I will, of course, uh, put in those uh, pictures from the data sheets of these different uh, parts, so you can see that. And here we go with the sensor pin of the inductors. When this line here in the shaft points towards that solder point right there, this is where we have the center and this is where this piece of metal touches the two halves the two inductors equally and then you have of course your center position so i think this is you the way you align this or calibrate this is by loosening this tiny little screw here and then you can rotate the entire um potentiometer i call this a potentiometer but it is obviously not a potentiometer in the sense that uh, we normally know. Yes. So the the detection method on the circuit board is, um, of course, using 
oscillators and frequencies and uh, all the fancy uh, smancy things and this is why we have those uh, super super high precision op amps here we got four of these we got inductors here for the oscillators and we got um, current drivers uh, for the outputs and um, and we got um, the DC input here this is the red wire with the white stripe this is a positive input and the positive input goes via a, a diode and uh, this inductor to this capacitor so there's a good filter for a uh, voltages uh, noisy nasty voltages on the input then this system handles it the ground is of course connected to those transient protectors right here and they protect the two current outputs and they are connected to these two wires right there so I should be able to power this up and see if I get uh, current outputs what I will do is I will take a resistor to uh, to ground on these two and then measure the two voltages that way I think that is what I want to do I could also put in an amp meter maybe let's see I think it's so impressive this unit really really works and it's rock solid stable it's what is it 30 years old and it has been in a I don't know <laughs> it looks like it was dropped from a plane or something like that it has been really really into some sort of a battlefield and they were knocked it off the uh, <laughs> the crane and they cracked the connectors off and it has been lying in a pool of dirt i don't know for how many years and it still works and it is is super super impressive so what i've done is i load both of the outputs with one kilo ohm because then the voltage i measure over the resistor is directly translated to milliamps right i give this 24 volts and it's using 65 milliamps and if i take my finger and really really carefully move it goes from 4 milliamps to 20 milliamps and see it is of course nice and fast and all that they even made it so the full scale of the output is not the full scale of the movement but it maxes out see a little bit before see there's still all this and i kind of guess that uh, maybe the jumpers we have here on the board maybe they set the full scale sensitivity you could you could imagine that just this tiny little change here could be your full scale um, depending on what you want to use this uh, unit for and of course they are very very expensive and again i think this translates to the stability accuracy resolution and all those uh, things that this unit uh, has to offer let's look a little bit on how it really works so what i've done is here i take a um i took a scope and i connect it to a signal here there's a sum signal from the two inductors so there's a drive and two inductors so the sum of the two inductors looks a little bit like this so let me see if i can get this nice and straight so we have a 12 kilohertz signal and um, at the moment we are in the middle so that is why the pulse here is exactly the same from the two uh, inductors right so if i move it all the way to one side you see one signal is a little bit before the other one see and if i move it left to right you see that time changes and that's of course because the inductance changes when it's more or less shorted by this iron core by eddy current effect and there is nothing that will change this i mean this can be hot this can be cold i mean it doesn't matter how old it is this 
is just going to be exactly the same. That is so, so cool, because if the inductance change is going to be the same in both of the sides. So, because it's the difference. Yeah, this is AC coupled, so that is why it jumps like that, right? So you go like this, wee, wee, wee. But that is not the interesting, it's this that is the interesting thing. So, anyway, I think that is all I wanted to show you in this uh, fantastic video. I knew that we had a nice little present hidden in this unit. So I think it was a lot of fun to show you this fantastic sensor and I had so much fun and a big big thank you to all the people who was involved in uh, getting me all the information that I needed and uh, yeah you were really really a good great help thanks a lot